What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm that Scottish nerd that's going to bring you Pokemon TCG content. I do bring you that content multiple times a week, so be sure to subscribe to my channel down below if you do love Pokemon TCG as much as me. But in today's video, we're having a look at ADP Station. It's very powerful in Standard, but it's even more powerful in Expanded. So I'm going to be showing off the deck and having some battles with it. If you want to skip ahead to those battles, there are timestamps in the description as always. Let's start it off with ADP, which is Arceus, Dalga, Palkia, GX Tag Team. Of course, if you're somehow not familiar, the Alter Creation GX attack allows you to take extra prize cards as well as dealing an additional 30 damage. So the main thing here is taking those extra prize cards and being able to finish out games extremely quickly just in a matter of turns, typically often like 5 turns if you're drawing good. And also it depends on what your opponent is playing of course, but then you can attach another energy, go into the ultimate ray, and you will be dealing a total of 180 after that GX stack, and of course you can boost this with muscle band as well, and then get 3 energy out of the deck to attach to your other Pokemon here. So just like in standard, we have the Zacian, which you can use Brave Blade on, dealing 260 after the GX attack, as well as with Muscle Band 280, so you're easily one-hitting all of the tag team Pokemon and taking four prize cards on those. And then you have the Intrepid Sword ability, which lets you draw three, and if there's any mental energy, you can attach them as well, which is great in the opening turns. We also have two different Aegis last year. We have the V, which allows you to go through any effects which would otherwise prevent you from attacking. So it's great for things like Decidueye, Altaria, that kind of thing, any annoying abilities or effects of attacks. Then we also have the Aegis Slash EX, which is a nice stall Pokemon as it prevents all Pokemon with special energy on your opponent's side from being able to deal damage to it. This automatically gives you a win against decks like Mad Party, which only use special energy, so this is a must-have in this deck in my opinion. Then we also have a couple of other supporting Pokemon here, things like Magearna prevents effects of attacks done to your Pokemon with Metal Energy. The Mobile puts basic Pokemon from your opponent's hand onto their bench so you can easily root out those low HP Pokemon which are going to give you some easy prize cards. Then we have a Tapu Lele which gives us a supporter, the Crobat to supplement that and increase our hand size overall. So. Very solid Pokemon line. You don't need the full 4 count of Zacian or even 3 really because you have so many other good attackers here as well as the fact that you're going to be finishing games really quickly so you don't need to get a huge amount of attackers. Same with our overall trainer lineup and energy. We do have that double dragon energy so you only need one attachment so when you're going second and it's your first turn you can attach this to ADP and use that GX attack immediately so that you get the effect for the rest of the game which is going to set you up extremely well. Then we have the 10 metal energy to go along with our metal saucers to get our Pokemon set up on the board and start dealing with those massive attacks. And then for the rest of the trainers, we have the big four count of Nest Ball, since we only have basic Pokemon. We've got our Quick Balls trainers mails to get our trainer cards out. We've got one copy of Guzman Hala, so if we are struggling to find what we need, or if we are just in a particular situation, we can actually make use of this and search out our Double Dragon, as well as the Chaotic Swell that we play, and whatever uh, tool card we need as well since we do play two different tool cards we have the float stones to give us some free movement and we also have muscle band as I mentioned boosting our damage even more so we can take very easy one hit knockouts on pretty much every Pokemon except for VMAX Pokemon and then of course just things like Guzma so that we can switch out our active as well when we use the Lysander effect then Lysander itself is a good thing for bringing up a low HP Pokemon like Denny or whatever you need to bring up into the active. Then we've got our N and Professor's Research, so very fast, very consistent, being able to finish out games extremely quickly and take those big one-hit knockouts for three or four prize cards at a time. It's going to be ridiculously strong and you're just covering all of your bases and being able to give yourself the best possible matchups in every scenario. Let's get into those matchups and see just how the deck works, see how fast it is, see how strong it is, everything like that. If you do enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like. I know ADP is a little bit of a toxic card, but hey, some of us still enjoy the card, so if you do enjoy it as well, be sure to like the video. Let's get into those matches. 
Alright, let's get into our first match here. We did opt to go a second since we were able to win the coin and flip. We don't have the best of hands here since we are going to have to find ourselves something like a Tapu Lele perhaps. We might well play then this Mawel. I mean my opponent didn't do much but you never know, they might have some Pokemon. They've got an Enhanced Hammer as well as the Krogunk and a Professor's Research so they have a reasonable start going on here. And of course if we do go with the Double Dragon Energy we are going to be getting hit with the Enhanced Hammer that we just saw there but I think it is going to be worth it overall since we do want to get that GX attack off pretty quickly and we also want to decide I suppose oh no, the uh, Magirna is only for attacks I was thinking that we might be able to prevent the enhanced hammer but unfortunately not so we'll just take a Zacian here and we'll also attach a muscle band somewhere I think we'll put it onto the active that seems reasonable and quick ball to get rid of this metal energy and then we'll search our deck for a way of getting a supporter card through this Tapu Lele. We could always go for the Crobat as well but I think just getting down the Tapu Lele is fine for now and we can use our Wonder Tag, go and grab ourselves a Professor Research of our own and that's going to allow us to refresh our hand and hopefully get into the double dragon energy that we need and yep there it is we also get down the chaotic swell I think I will just hold on to that for now actually I was tempted to play it down but we could just wait until my opponent plays down a stadium if they have any and then we can always counter their stadium as well as putting chaotic swell down which will counter their future stadium as well yep there is the enhanced hammer the very first card that my opponent plays getting rid of our energy seems good they evolve into the Krogunk, of course, and use Professor's Research, so very poison-heavy deck from the looks of things. We'll have to see what other poison Pokemon that they use. Okay, we see a level ball coming out and grabbing them the coughing here, the shiny coughing, so I'm guessing it's going to be the wheezing, which shuts down abilities and also poison, so with that Krogunk, they will be able to deal some additional poison damage and they go for the ascension which evolves into the wheezing here which I was mentioning and it turns off all abilities on our side when it's in the active spot so not very good that we don't have access to our intrepid sword unfortunately we do have the metal saucer we can make use of here and put some energy into play let's just put it onto the Zacian as a big attacker so if we want to take something out we can and uh, we have a trainer's mail here we can make use of before we do anything else. Getting ourselves another quick ball. We have the Versus Seeker, of course, for Professor's Research. So I'm definitely going to be grabbing that to make use of it and try and get into some more energy. And then just using these quick balls to thin out the rest of the cards in our hand before we discard our entire hand. Uh, We'll definitely want to get down Magirna since that's going to prevent the poison damage that my opponent is going to be doing here. Although it is going to be shut off by their abilities. I keep forgetting about this ability so yeah, but, I mean that, that is rough man, that is rough. So quick ball I guess getting rid of the Magirna since we're not actually going to be able to make use of it. Again the same with the Aegislash so we just need a solid attacker here. They can deal consistent damage every turn so we'll go with the other Aegislash that we have, Aegislash V, put down our Chaotic Swell and go with a Professor's Research. Just looking for the Double Dragon energy, but unfortunately we just find a bunch of Metal energy instead. So I'll just start attaching some of this onto our Aegislash V and we'll pass it over to my opponent. Definitely a bit unfortunate as I would really like to power up that Ultimate Ray and take knockouts with our ADP, but Powering up something in the back while this ADP takes some damage is going to be reasonable instead. And we see here my opponent drawing some cards, looking to set up some more Pokemon on their bench and try and build up that poison damage as much as possible. We also see another great poison partner I've used myself in the Quillfish here. It does 10 damage but does 60 more if the defending Pokemon is poisoned. So. It's nice for getting some extra damage in and the ability on it also makes the defending Pokemon poisoned whenever it takes damage so it's a good little addition in a poison deck here. We see my opponent going for the attack, we do wake up from our hypnotoxic laser and we are still poisoned also, we're going to be taking a bunch of damage here. 
think we'll be wanting to play down all of these tools as well before we use our professor's research. Kind of regret putting muscle band on the active as we could definitely have made use of it right here if we were able to get into something like a metal saucer that would have been great. Let's attach a muscle band onto the Lele, we'll put a float stone on Zation and then professor's research to ditch this hand and just find something like the metal saucers. We did get one so that's great. We can put some more energy onto our Age slash V and then we're just going to be passing it back over to my opponent and we'll be looking to get something like a, a Guzma or a Versus Seeker anyway because we only have one Guzma and I believe we got rid of it, yeah. We have Guzma in the discard pile so we're definitely looking for a Versus Seeker so that we can make use of Guzma and switch into our Age slash V here. Since we don't have a way of putting on a float stone anymore since the muscle band is stuck on there. Um, we could always attach energy and try and build up to an attack with the ATP but I reckon we're going to get knocked out before that ever happens so we're just going to have to give our opponent the free three prize cards and then hopefully swing the game back into our favour from there since we will be able to take extra prizes after getting that uh, auto creation GX attack off. See my opponent is retreating here into the quillfish and they're going to be dealing some damage with the quillfish. It's a total of 70 plus 80 from the poison so that's a lot of damage and we're going to be getting knocked out going into my opponent's turn which is a bit unfortunate. Definitely want to get a versus seeker off of this trainer's mail if possible. Unfortunately not, just some metal saucers so we'll definitely take that and we can always make use of it at some point. We have the metal energy. I think we are, we do know my opponent is playing crushing hammer, so I think we'll attach a fourth energy onto the H slash V, and also putting down the muscle band so that we can make use of the crowbat here. Really digging for the versus seeker in order to get use out of Guzma. Fortunately, we just get into the Lysander, which is not any help to us at all. Uh, we could always try and Lysander up something to stall, but considering my opponent has the Dark Rye, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. So we'll go with the N here. We could always have waited on the N so that my opponent goes down to three prize cards, but I just want to see some other cards going into this following turn. And we will, of course, be able to Intrepid Sword since my opponent did retreat the Weezing there, so we can actually use our abilities. And the of course, as I mentioned, we are getting knocked out going into my opponent's turn, so we're going to have to promote something else. And most likely just the Zation here, we could always promote uh, something else with the Float Stone, maybe like uh, the Tapu Lele. It doesn't have a Muscle Band, but it has a 1 Retreat cost. I think we'll just go in with the Zation though. It can attack and it has the Float Stone, so we have some options here. And hopefully my opponent isn't able to get a knockout on it in one hit because that would be really bad and we don't want that to happen, we want to actually try and win this matchup so my opponent brings in the Weezing once again after playing the Verbank City Gym which also increases their poison damage and they are just going straight for the attack so no other cards played and we can go for the retreat here since we do have free retreat going straight into the H slash V without losing any energy is great and there's not really any cards that I want to be playing down here as we have pretty much everything that we need. I think we will be playing N though since my opponent does have a pretty large hand and getting rid of some of that would be pretty useful here. So I'll possibly hold on to this. We could attach it to the mobile. I think the fact that my opponent is playing Crushing Hammers, we don't know what other shenanigans that they're playing so we will hold on to our energy just in case they get rid of some more of the energy off of our Ages Last V. We need to get it back into play. We'll hit them with the end, put them down to three cards, and then we can go for the attack. Getting the knockout, dealing 160 damage, and we're able to take two prize cards. So after the Alter Creation GX, as I said, we're definitely not out of this match whatsoever. If my opponent isn't doing enough damage to get a one-hit knockout, and we're going to be able to take two prize cards at a time. So all we really need to do here is get Two more knockouts and then we have won this match. We unfortunately go to sleep so that's not going to be any good for us because we're going to be wanting to get a heads here and wake up so that we can once again attack but we do get into the versus seeker 
So we do have the option of using a Guzma on our following turn. That's going to be putting us in a great position to bring up one of my opponent's defending Pokemons. Well, one of the ones that's on their bench, I should say. And we see they're getting another... Um, what's it called? The coughing. I knew it was the Galarian, but yeah, the coughing down. And I think going and getting a knockout on that is going to be really beneficial for us. Or alternatively, we could target down the Darkrai. That would give us some additional prize cards. Not that we really need them, but could be useful to prevent them from having the free movement of their Pokemon, as well as just protecting our Aegislash here in general. So we will be using the Versus Seeker, as that is the only means of retreating, as I've said, or switching out anyway. And we are just going to bring up the Coughing here and get a knockout on that. And at this point I will attach the energy onto Mawwell so that we have a backup attacker. And then just getting the knockout with our Zacian. Taking two more prize cards. Even if my opponent gets a knockout on our Zacian we do have the Aegislash V in the back now. As well as that Mawwell we did just get an energy so we can even attack with the Mawwell. And we're in a very good spot here to actually win this game now. And it definitely didn't go downhill whatsoever so... Even in the sketchiest of situations where you think it's going to be going bad, just that use of the GX attack and taking extra prize cards can really swing the game in your favour. And we did get end down to two. We did get a metal energy plus metal saucer, so not the best hand, but my opponent goes for the special conditions again so that they can get a knockout with the quillfish here. But like I said, as soon as they get a knockout, we are going to be promoting our Aegis Lash V, and that would get us the game. But my opponent didn't even get the knockout, and we did wake up from the sleep. So we're able to just use our Floatstone to freely retreat and use Aegis Lash V to take a nice, easy knockout and take the final two prize cards of the match. So, very nice start to the video and our battles against a pretty difficult matchup considering our abilities were being shut off completely. That is really the power of Auto Creation GX. Let's get into another match. Getting into our second match here, it looks like we're up against a little bit of a mirror match since my opponent is also playing a Zacian. They have the nice secret Vare golden version here which I wish I had. Looks very nice. I do like the full art spot. The golden one is epic and they did get the energy down, but they don't have a whole lot going on on their first turn. Just an Intrepid Sword, so we'll go for the double Nest Ball that we have. And try and get the GX attack off here if we can. Although, oh no, we do actually, we can, because we did top deck the uh, the Float Stone here. So we are going to be missing out on a Supporter, which is not, to, uh, it's not great, it's not ideal. But I think getting the GX attack off here... Is going to be beneficial overall. So we'll retreat into ADP. We can use computer search here to discard two of these cards. Don't want to get rid of both metal energy because if we keep one we can at least use the ultimate ray on the following turn. And we're just going to be attaching onto the active and using our GX attack. Even if my opponent is able to somehow get all of the energy that they need they're not going to be getting a knockout just yet. So we should be in a reasonable position here. To use our ultimate ray attack on this following turn, get ourselves set up. Which is a little bit slower than I'd like it, but we're still in a good position overall here. My opponent going for the Guzma and Hala, so that's going to allow them to get a tool card, a stadium card, and a special energy card. Most likely trying to get the ADP of their own setup, if it is that much of an exact mirror match. And let's see, they're discarding two special energies here, Weakness Guard and the Counter Energy, which is interesting. They're getting the Big Charm and the Double Colorless Energy. I'm really starting to question if this is actually a mirror match, and don't think it is, considering the energy cards that they're playing here are very unusual. But they attach the Big Charm onto the active, and they also play then the Swell, and then just go for another Intrepid Sword, so we're not too bad here, we can just attach another energy and go for Ultimate Ray. Unfortunate that we're not getting a knockout, but considering how far behind my opponent is, we should be perfectly fine here. 
we'll just get three energy and attach all of these onto our station since we don't really need them anywhere else and my opponent does get up a big threat then we can go in with a virtualization for sure. Going back over to my opponent's turn they are going to be playing down a Pokemon here, the Stunfisk. So I guess this is what the Double Coilless is for. Try and troll us a little bit I suppose. Fair enough. We'll have to see if they actually get the energy to power up. They're going for an Ace Arola so that's going to counter the damage that we just put onto the Zacian and protect it for a turn at least. But they are just reattaching onto the Zacian and going for an Tribal Sword. Once again, missing energy, but they are building up a massive hand here. So let's just try and stay ahead in this matchup. We'll go for the Ultimate Ray. We'll just ignore the fact that my opponent's Stunfisk has annoying ability. And we are going to be getting a bunch of energy into play once again. We'll put three energy onto the Aegislash V. It is a reasonable attacker since we have used our jet stack. We're going to be doing a base of 160. So it's not a bad attack whatsoever. And we are picking up two prize guards here. Losing the double dragon energy. So we can't use ultimate ray unless we find another double dragon energy. But considering my opponent's Zacian only has one energy on it. All we need to do is find a way of switching out to one of our other Pokemon. And we can certainly get a knockout on this Zacian. My opponent playing down the Togekiss V here, so yeah, this is a very crazy deck. It has a lot of different energy and different Pokemon in it from the looks of things. I don't think they really have a focus of any one attacker that they want to make use of. They're just trying to use a whole load of different attackers here, which is very interesting. We have the Nest Ball we can make use of to get ourselves a, another Metal Pokemon down. Probably just another Zacian, or well, we could get down the Magirna as well, but it's not a great attacker, so we'll just get a second Zacian so that we can make use of our Metal Saucer. Put Metal Energy onto there, and we'll go for our Trainer's Mail, hoping for a Supporter card. That's technically a Supporter card, so we'll take it. We'll get the Quick Ball, and discard a Versus Seeker once again. I think we've all just put down the Aegislash. And we do have the Tapu Lele. Unfortunately, no Crobat, so we can't just draw cards. We'll have to use our Wonder Tag ability here and find ourselves a supporter this way around. And just getting a Professor's Research to fill our hand. Could always went for something like an N, but considering we have four prize cards remaining, it's not going to be worth it overall, I don't think. We also have the Quick Ball. We can thin out the deck a little more. And just get rid of the Lysander, I think. We have the Guzma as a means of switching out, so don't really mind getting rid of the Lysander. And then using our Trainer's Mail, looking for a Float Stone. Fortunately, not able to find it, but we do have the Guzma and Hala. And we can even attach an Energy. Unfortunately, the uh, ADP here does have a 3 Retreat cost, so we can't just attach and retreat. But we can at least attach to our Zacian and start building that up, I guess. Or perhaps the Aegislash. We'll go with Aegislash since my opponent does have a lot of special energy in their deck. And we'll go for the Entrapasaur. There is the Float Stone. So we can at least have the Float Stone to retreat on this following turn. And get a knockout on one of my opponent's two prizer Pokemon. They do get the Togekiss VMAX. This is a fairly bulky Pokemon with a nice attack. For 2 energy it does 120 damage, and then you can search your deck for any 2 cards. So we see this in a, a lot of control decks, which try and stall your opponent being able to search out any 2 cards. Especially things like healing, since we do know that they're playing Ace of Rola. So they'll try and, you know, take a hit, heal with Ace of Rola, go into something else, that kind of thing. But dealing 120 is definitely not a huge amount of damage. We are going to be forced into getting a 2 hit on them though, so if they do get any kind of heal, that is going to be pretty annoying to have to deal with. We do have our Guzma though, so we can use the Guzma, bring up that Zacian, get a knockout on that, and then go into a different attacker from there. The opponent gets the 2 cards out of the deck that they want. We could always go for the N as well if we want to, but just going for the Guzma and taking a nice easy knockout Sounds good to me. 
sure if we knock out the VMAX then we would be able to win that way but I think this is going to be just fine and it really puts pressure on my opponent so take a knockout on this station go down to just one prize card remaining so if my opponent plays down any other Pokemon then we can use a Lysander and bring it up and get a nice victory otherwise we are going to be looking to get a two hit on the Togekiss VMAX and at least they're if they did get any kind of healing cards, then we've prevented them from being able to use them since we didn't actually deal damage, so they can't use an Acerola. And they're just going to be hitting into us again, dealing that 120. Now from this point, we have the Float Stone so we can retreat. And they've chosen not to search their deck for any cards, which is interesting. Not really sure why they did that. But we have the Float Stone, like I said. We just need a attacker here, I suppose we'll go into the Aegislash, it does already have a Fault Stone so makes sense as we can always retreat if we need to and we're going to be hitting them for 160, choosing not to play out any of the other cards in my hand like an N despite the fact that my opponent has a large hand themselves just because of the fact that we have so many options available to us. My opponent using the Lysander so they want to get a knockout on the Zacian here and they do have the max potion, so they're going to be able to heal. But they are losing all of that energy into the discard. And replacing it, of course, with the double colorless energy here. So looking to stall as much as possible while also taking a knockout on our station. We can go in once again with the Aegislash and deal some damage with that. Since we are able to attack with it every single turn. Whereas Zacian, you're not able to attack on the following turn. So perhaps here is the spot where we use N, but uh, again, just going down to one card remaining in our hand, since we do only have one prize card, that feels pretty bad. But the massive hand that my opponent has, we really need to stall them and prevent them from having things like max potions again. So let's go into the Aegislash V. We do have energy at least, so we can attach onto the Aegislash EX and start powering that up. We also have the Metal Saucer, so getting the Aegislash EX and making it so that my opponent can't hit on this is going to be great here. We even have the muscle band for it to boost the damage even more. And I think we are just going to go for the N here. Although the other option, I suppose actually we could use Mawile, see if my opponent has any Pokemon, and then from there try and get a knockout on said Pokemon. So that seems pretty good. Let's go with that. We'll play down our Mawile. And there we go, my opponent has a lot of Pokemon available in their hand actually, so we can put all of those Pokemon onto my opponent's bench, and then we have the Versus Seeker that we can actually just use for a Lysander, and that is going to close out the game. And that is definitely why you need the Mawile in your deck, so that you can win games with the Mawile and Lysander combo nothing that your opponent can do about it unless they're actively discarding those Pokemon and my opponent just wasn't doing that so we're able to close out another game really showing off the power of ADP how effective that GX attack is in taking extra prize cards so I hope you enjoyed this video despite how toxic ADP is in the community and be sure to give this video a like if you did enjoy it regardless I'll see you in the next one